Welcome back to Bombtastic Gaming. I'm Jake. Thank you all for tuning in and all the support. But if you haven't already, please hit the like, the subscribe, as well as click that bell so you can get notifications when new videos like this drop. Okay, so for this video, we're getting into another board game. This one's called Plunder, A Pirate's Life. So, basically, it's if similar, kind of, to Catan, if y'all have played that. If not, don't worry, I'll get into explaining it more. So, for setup, what you do is it comes with these two little spinners. And as you can see, these are six tiles um, here. It's kind of hard to see because they're matched, but see, there you go. So, you put the six there with the corresponding alphabet and numbers. And what this will help will determine things with these. So, like I said, so what you do, you start out and you would just spin these, you know, whatever they may be. So, we'll say it lands on, you know, uh, we'll do A15. So, you would just find the corresponding number to the letter. And they're going to be on all sides and it will match up. So, the way they have it. So, it'll be on this way. You'll be able to figure it out. So, like A15, you would put a little red X here and you do it for the th up to four X's or three, three X's. You set that up, then you do the same spinner and this is called the storm. So whatever it lands on, you put the center on it. So like if it is, it would be G10, this is the center of the storm. So that will go there. Then, so there, okay. Yeah, so there, we'll just move the three X's so you guys can see them better. So you these are the resource cards that are part of the game that will help you build and advance your pirate fleet. So what you'll do is you, you take like half of them and you shuffle them all together and make a stack. And then the others are separated because there's a chance to specifically pull that resource. This format or this way it's set up is for three to six players. There is a two player variant. We'll get into that later. But basically what happens is you would take turns. You, you can decide however you want. There's no standard for that in the game of who goes first. And the last person to pick their island, uh, they start the game. So when you pick an island, yes, if it, you can see there's islands with one skull. There's one here with three skulls. And like you'll have a couple that have two skulls. Each person must pick an island with one skull. So you have a little flag and your ship. This is how your ship starts out. So it's just three lights. You would put your flag on the island and your ship in the little port with the anchor. And that's how you start. And everybody will go do that. So you would have like your enemy ship say here. The objective is to get 10 victory points. You have one victory point for each ship and island that you control. Then there are, by hitting the red X's, so once you start moving, you will just roll a normal dice. So they give you three dice. This is supposed to be the movement, attack, and defense dice. But there, nothing special other than this has this little symbol on the one. All the others are regular D6s. So when you start off, you roll your movement. If you roll any movement number, that is what you move. So And you can move in lines and you cannot land on islands or cross islands so these ones are called like a just a barrier so you can move next to it but you cannot move like over it or fire or trade which we'll get into here in a second but if you roll the one what happens is you will move one but you roll these spinners again and then move the storm so the purpose of the storm is if you're inside it, you can move within inside the storm. You can collect X's if they are in the storm, but you can, and you can move in and out of the storm. However, it costs two movements per, or two resources to move out or two to move in. Now, if you're outside and you wanted to go here and your movement dice allow it, you can move, but it costs four resources. So that's the only thing. It doesn't slow down any movement. It just kind of prohibits people from in and out. And since we're talking about movement, now if you're here like this set up next to a an opponent ship, normally if the storm is not there, you can attack and or trade with them. 
But if the storm is there, you cannot do you can do neither as long as they are one's outside and inside. Now, if they were both inside, you can attack and trade. Um so once the storm is moved, you can't you can't move like over their ship either. Um or you can't you sorry, you can't land on the same space. You can move through like through their ship and diagonally too. Or no, you can't move diagonally, but you can move like through their ship if you have enough uh, moves pertaining to it. <clears throat> um, and then also, so I kind of forgot, we'll go back. When you start out, you'll each player draws three resources from the uh, random resource deck to start the game. Then each turn per island, you draw one resource randomly. When you... And then on your movement tools, when you land on the X, what happens is you have this deck of cards that's randomized, of course. And then you would, if you land on it, you would flip it and and read whatever it says. It, so it gives you the title, like a little fun story to it. And then it'll tell you what you can do. So like this one, you would get two gold and then move an enemy ship up to three spaces. So this is where you draw from the specific resource deck. And then there are other ones. So like you'll gain this. And then I think there are some where you lose life, you gain life. See, so, and once you collect an X, you spin the dials and move the X. So it gives you a chance for players. Now, also like here, so we have a straight line. If I was here and I rolled say a six, I could do one, two, stop. And then collect, three, four, collect, and then move again. The only things with um, attacking, so like if I move here and decide to attack, after the attack is done, if I don't sink the ship, I cannot move and attack that same ship again with this ship. If I have a second ship, it can move and attack it, this one. And I could move this ship if I have enough, and they had another ship, I could move and attack both ships with that same ship. You just cannot attack the same ship twice in the turn. And then if you trade with a uh, an opponent, you can't attack them either. It's like a automatic truce for that turn. Now, it, with claiming... So with the attacker always gets the advantage too when you roll. If you roll uh, evens, if it's a tie, the attacker always wins. Same with attacking... An island. So what happens here is if you want to, like this is unclaimed. Um, so if I move into the island, I can attack it. Now, if it's unoccupied, you just pick a random opponent to roll for the island. If it's occupied with an opponent's flag, they obviously roll. So the skulls come into play because for each skull, they add one to their defense dice. So if I have no cannons on my ship, what my attack roll is, is my attack roll. So if I roll like a four and then they roll a three, but they have a skull, so it'd be four, but I win. Now, if they rolled a four as well, they win. And so with the island, you just claim it. When you win as an attacker on the ship of the ship, they lose one of these little red figurines. That's the life total. Once three are gone, the ship sinks. And then if you attack something, and whether it be the island or another ship, and you lose as the attacker, your ship loses a life. So, like I said, when you get 10 victory points, you'll win the game. So every time you sink a ship, you get a victory point, which is delineated by these just little hook cards. So it's a way to gain victory points. There are also cards that just say gain a victory point in here. You can upgrade your ships to give them faster movement and more fighting power. And so this is a full, like would be a fully decked out ship. So each cannon, like the islands, add one to your attack roll and each of the masts add one to your movement. So you can move potentially up to eight spaces with one ship and you get eight attack. So each player will get one of these cards as well and it'll tell you how what resources it needs to add to the ship. And then obviously if you have five gold, you can also buy a plunder point th that way as well. Also a thing to note 
is that these sh these you can only if you like so this is the here and it's owned by red i could move in here choose not to attack and trade with a red opponent if like their ships are off here and i can't get next to them now if again remember the trading thing now there's islands with these little barrels here so what could happen is if you land here you can trade with any uh opponent and those islands cannot be owned that have the um barrel on them and uh so i did say about the one skulls and that's again there's very uh there's rules in this here's the rule book up for a two-player variant which basically you would just kind of like cut off the wheel and you make a smaller board also um there are rules which I won't I won't go over because it's kind of complicated, but there are rules for the player to continue playing even if they lose like their islands and or all their ships. Because if you lose if you still have a ship you can play, you just try to catch another island. You won't get any resources when you start the turn if you have no island. But there's also ways to get back in the game if you lose your islands and your ship. Like, you are not out of the game. But it, it is very uh, difficult to get back in the game if people are, like, way, way ahead. You can also technically play this um, as, uh, like, a team. So you could pick teams, you know, even though there's six different colors in, in the um, game itself. I'm just trying to make sure I didn't miss anything. So yes, yeah, so you cannot move diagonally. I did, I was a little confused. And then kind of the same thing. So like if you're in here, you can't move across islands. You would have to come back out. And during your movement tools or your movement, if you have enough, you could do like here, you can pause, collect it, continue, go back in here, trade, and then move. And if you have multiple ships during your turn, you just you would pick which ship you're choosing to go first. So like if I was a red player, I would say this one first, then move, do everything associated with that ship. And then, then I would go over here and move. But at the start of the, the overall turn is when you collect the resources. That pretty much covers everything for this plunder, a pirate's life. It's like I said in the beginning, it's very similar to Catan. If you haven't played that, Maybe we'll do a video, but it's a pretty popular game as well. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for more content like this, and we'll catch you next time. Take care.